Welcome fellow knights and fair maidens. As you've probably seen from the thumbnail and the title, I am going to be building a campsite for my two, uh, the Tilly brothers that I painted a while ago. Um, yeah, so I'll be sort of briefly running through what I did. Uh, I've got no previous experience, so this is not a how-to guide, this is just a how I did it guide. So the first thing I focus on is cutting the actual poles for the tent themselves. Uh, it, I have to keep in mind that it's a 54 millimeter scale with these knights. So here you can see I've got what I'm considering the, the standing up poles, uh, the legs of the whole thing, and just measuring them against the, the model here. So you can see that's roughly how high up the tent will sit. Uh, give or take, you know, it also will go into the, the ground a little bit of padding so the you know, a little bit of the bottom might disappear. Once I have the rough sizes of the poles, I'm putting them around to sort of gauge an idea of where they'll actually be on my canvas. Now this is just a canvas with a bit of cardboard underneath. Um, you can get them from Hobbycraft, not too expensive at all. And I'm just using this as the base. It's not gonna be a very big model. It only needs to fit two tents. So that's what I'm currently marking out here and now. So there we go, that's roughly what it will look like when they are actually set up. Next, I'm moving on to the, the more detailed part of the tents. Now for this one, this is the single pole in the center. This is the tent that I will be using for my character. I'm basing it off of a realistic uh, design. And as you can see, that's the sort of, when I'm in the tent, I'm sort of at level with the, the bars as well. So it's a, you know, can hit my head. Now the next one is the bigger tent for my brother. My thoughts are he's the firstborn, he's gonna have a bigger tent, more space. So I'm actually giving him the tent that has is two poles width. Now I've actually stayed in a tent like this. I think we've fit up to about three, four people in it. So it's got a good amount of space for the firstborn son. And here I am just using the hot glue gun just to put along the bar along the top. Now in real life, that's pretty much all the poles you're going to need. Uh, but to, to make sure that I can get the, the fabric to wrap correctly, I'm actually going to put extra supports underneath. Now these wouldn't exist in real life. You can very much get the same effect, where, but just applying tension to the, to the canvas and just hammering in nails just to keep it, yeah, as I said, keep the tension. So these bordering poles are, as I said, completely just for shape reasons with this but in actual fact in real life you would not have them uh, same again here with the triangular shape that i'm trying to make there is no need to have this in real life the tension of the pegs in the ground will hold it up this also means when traveling i imagine that the tents you only know, need in this circle not three poles which will be easier to travel than carrying around this frame and also you just have the canvas with that as well so that just explains the why I'm having to do the borders and I'll just let you finish watching me finish this process. And there you have it with the floor completed as well, which didn't take too long. Next, what I'm doing is I'm applying the canvas to the, the wood. And as you can see, the reason I've included those poles is to keep the framework. Now, I didn't unfortunately get a good video of me doing the, the longer tent, but here you can see me doing the single man tent.
Now it must be said that the process was a little bit fiddly here as you can see there's a lot of resizing, recutting and then when you dip it in the paper mache, which by the way is a watered down paper mache, when you dip it in it curves it up curls it up and you've got to unravel it you're, you know it's a very messy process this uh, but I had a lot of fun doing it and as you can see here I'm just trying to stretch out the canvas just around the tent uh, just to give it that nice look and feel So yeah, as I said, we do actually use these tent styles for reenactment. They do not have a ground sheet, so you often you'd have furs or rugs or you know things put on the ground in order to keep you elevated from the floor. This does also mean, however, that in certain events I've been to, creepy crawlies find their way in a lot easier. Um, so that it does take a bit of adjusting, but I get used to it. But yeah, so here you can see I'm just folding around, just making it all nice. And then I'm moving on to the top part, the top flap, which does also, that is a real thing, you know, that just allows for the air to escape from the top where the heat rises. And yeah, it can, you know, it can get a bit smelly after a few fights and, you know, sweat and the mail, the, the, the chain mail that you've got, the mail, sorry for reenactors, the mail that you've got, the sword, everything like that can, you know, it's after a while it's an acquired taste acquired taste acquired scent to smell and you do feel at home as soon as you walk into the tent with it all set up but it does take you back at first Next, I'm working on the entranceway to both of the tents. Uh, again, in this circumstance, you probably have only the two tents. You wouldn't need the brace along the top. You certainly wouldn't need the braces that I'm putting that will connect to the tent, as you're about to see. This would all, again, be done by the tension of the poles and using pegs and guy ropes and things like that. But for the sake of this diorama, I'm not that skilled yet. So I very much just use this as a base. Uh, this one I'm actually putting together, sorry, is for the front of the other tent. There you go. And now I'm putting on this. These are the brace bits I'm putting on. These will connect to the actual tent canvas, but they will be hidden. And here we go, just putting on the top canvas now, cutting a little bit away at the corners so they can fold down easier and it looks a bit more smooth than having some overlapping fabric. What I'll then be doing is going over the top with the, the mache material just to push it down as you can see here and then going in my tweezers just to get the, the shape nice 
as well. So you can at the moment see through and you can see the brace that I put the, out of wood, but don't worry, I will be painting that and it will hide it eventually. So just previously there showing you what the tent, how it looks like now, now it's all set up. Now on to the actual ground itself. I didn't actually cover what I did before. I very much just got some thin foam boards. I've got one for the, the first layer where my tent will be sat. And then for the second layer, just to give a bit of difference in height, is the second pad where my brother's tent will sit. And all I'm doing now is starting off by putting over a nice layer of tissue and some paper mache in the hopes to just give it that that ground the mud the texture feel and at a certain point here you'll notice that the the arm does change that's because my other half actually did step in and you know she I was, I was having a lot of fun and she wanted to come join me she also gave me some good advice i was doing it too uniformed as you can see it's just too flat so in a moment you'll see she came on in she's painting here here we go here you go so she's painting it and i'm very much by this point just throwing her on everywhere and anywhere and she is just painting it down with the paper mache and all that will do is it'll just give it different textures for the hillside. And now on to the painting. As you can see here, I've chosen mummy robes color just to give that uh, sort of dull, uh, dulled white canvassy look that you get the creamy sort of feel to it. And I'm just gonna be painting that over it. Now, the actual fabric that I used, the, um, what are they called? The, the face wash wipes that I use to make the canvas is absorbing a lot of the paint. So the only bad thing I'd say about this is I used a lot more paint than I wanted to. Um, for a small model paint thing for the, your small models it, it did kind of use up a lot but still had a lot of fun doing it and now I'm just adding the the red trimming that would be in line with the red of the Fleur de Lis of the Dottili brothers to this tent just to give it a nice sort of feel and also that dark the, the darker the more fresh orange color red color sorry allows it to just di make the wood behind it disappear and you wouldn't know And of course, on to the next lovely bright colour that is yellow, this being in our coat of arms. So I wanted to get a lot of colour here for this tent. And it looks awesome. I'm loving the way it's looking right now.
Next, I'm on to the single man tent, and I've decided to go with the yellow first, just to map out everywhere that I want the yellow. And then, after this, you'll see that I move on to the reds as well, just to, same as the previous tent, just to give a little bit of border to some of those places, really make a stand out. And of course, with my additional band across my coat of arms, the black needed to be incorporated into this tent somehow. And I think it gives it a really nice look. Now I'm on to the painting of the ground itself. Now every single stage I had with doing the ground, I had a lot of fun. Uh, it, it did take up a bit of time. Uh, you can see here I'm using a really, you know, a bigger brush just to really put down the brown paint. This is the undercoat just to give the mud feel. There will obviously be additional details added on top, but this is very much just me painting as much brown on as I can uh, just to really see the hills and it really starts to come to life you know it's no longer looks like tissue it starts looking like this is forming into something and for me this was a very exciting process uh definitely would recommend it to anybody that hasn't given it a go before it was not actually as difficult as i was expecting um, and i yeah as i said had a lot of fun with it Now I didn't actually get a good shot of this, I forgot to put the recording on, but I actually, as you can see, did go over with a slightly lighter brown and went over with a dry brush, just to sort of give the differentiation in height with the mud. The next stage here, this is the first time I'd ever done something, anything like this, is putting down the grass. So I sprayed some PVA glue mixed with some water down before, on, on the ground first, and I sprinkled these over the top.
Once the, the grass work had all been completed, I put the tent back on just to see what it looked like and I decided that the tents just looked a bit too clean. They didn't look like they'd been used. So what I wanted to do is get a dark wash like I've done here and just go all over the tents. Make it look like it sat through rain, mud, all sorts. And as you can see here, it's slowly giving that slightly muddied effect, which I really like. The next stage here, I am currently just spraying over some paper mache with some water so I can put on some lovely longer, darker grass just to give it a little bit of diversity than just one style of grass here. I had a lot of fun again spreading this around and just choosing certain bits to, to really make it seem like they're on uh, a hillside or a slight mound so there would have been certain areas where the grass is a bit longer than others and the more people walking through would slowly erode away and, and just kick up the mud and things like that. So that's what I'm trying to get across here. Next I just wanted to add some sort of thick bush looking bits where the hillside you know meets the ground and just to really hammer home that all the different types of uh, the, the English countryside has to offer. I'm using a mixture of techniques here mostly just using um, some wood glue sticking it behind but I did actually find that the wood glue wasn't see through when drying so I also looked at paper mache over the top as well. Finally, finishing with some actual plants and things like that, just scattering them around just to give, again, more diversity with the flowers. I do have further plans to add scenery items such as benches, things like that. But for now, this is the Dottili campsite and I love it. Thank you everyone so much for watching. Please don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And another one for me, please remember to stay vigilant and I shall see you on the battlefield.